Welcome. So in this course, we're going to be learning about computer architecture. And this course is an adaptation of a course which I teach at Princeton University called ELE, or for Electrical Engineering, 475. And I'm David Wensloff. I'm a professor here at Princeton. And my background is mostly looking at how to build many core and multi-core microprocessors. And in the past, I've actually built uh, two of the world's fastest many core microprocessors in industry, and before that I've worked in academia building many core microprocessors. So about 15 years of processor design experience. In today's lecture, we're going to be talking about introduction or some uh, opening to what is computer architecture, why do you want to learn computer architecture, how it's different than previous courses that you might have taken, so something like a computer organization class or a logic design course. And then we'll talk about some content today, which is uh, looking at instruction set architectures and how a instruction set architecture or big A architecture is different than implementation or microarchitecture and why it's a good idea to split out these two ideas. So let's take a step back and look at the course administration of this class and how this class is going to be organized. So as I said, I'm David Wensloff. Um, this class is roughly going to be the equivalent of two 80-minute lectures a week. So this is the same uh, format that's used at Princeton University for this course. And it's, we're going to try to segment into shorter segments to sort of give you bite-sized nuggets with questions and answers intermixed to, to check your understanding as the, as the video goes on. Two uh, books that I wanted to talk about. Um, this is the Computer Architecture, A Quantitative Approach by John Hennessy and David Patterson. Um, this is a very, very good book. Um, if you are going to be doing computer architecture, I highly recommend it. Or, uh, and it's a heavily, heavily, heavily suggested book for this course. Um, I did want to point out that there's a lot of different versions of this book floating around. We're going to be using the fifth edition, and you should go get the fifth edition. The fifth edition is very different than the fourth edition. Um, it's updated uh, as of 2012, so it's very fresh. And then a auxiliary text, which is useful for a portion of this class, um, I'll mention it as the Shen Laposte book, because of the two authors. Um, Modern Processor Design and Fundamentals of Superscalar Processors. Um, the reason we're going to use this book, um, or a reason that we're going to, uh, I, I'll recommend some readings out of this book, is that it has a lot deeper coverage of superscalar processors than the computer uh, architecture book. So this, this is a great book to, be, uh, to begin with, but it doesn't cover how to build superscalar processors in great depth. This book goes on to do that, and that's something we're going to be talking a lot about in this course. A lot of the content of computer organization, or, or a traditional computer organization class, I'm going to repeat in the first three lectures of this course, or the first three and a half lectures of this course. And the reason for this is because I teach everything from first principles and want to get everyone on the same page, but it's, we're going to go very, very fast through that material. So if you've not had a computer organization class, it may be possible to take this class, but I highly recommend uh, taking a computer organization class before this class because this is the second class in sort of a computer architecture series where you'd have computer organization and computer architecture and we really do uh, rely on the prereqs. But if you are watching the first three lectures and you say, I know all this, yes, that is correct. You should know all this. If you don't know all this, then you should probably uh, go back and retake computer organization uh, or take a computer organization class. Uh, but don't drop the class if you take the first three lectures and say, oh, I know all this, and just, just leave at that point. Because we're just going to breeze through that content very fast as building from first principles. 